This video looks at every NBA team's best pickup in 2024's offseason via free agency or the trade market. The Milwaukee Bucks signing six-year veteran sharpshooter formerly of my hometown Toronto Raptors Gary Trent Jr. to a one-year veteran minimum contract was their best addition. This was a summer where the Bucks also signed Torian Prince and DeLon Wright. Trent is an upgrade over Malik Beasley on the wing and gives Milwaukee a solid fourth option next to Giannis, Dame, and Middleton. In the recent blockbuster with the Knicks, in addition to getting Dante DiVincenzo and a future first round pick via the Pistons, the Minnesota Timberwolves landed three-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA player and 2021's MIP Julius Randle. In January, before missing the rest of the season with a shoulder injury, Don Julio posted 25 points, 8 rebounds, and 5 assists per game in that month. They gave up a lot in towns, but Randle seemed to be peaking before he got hurt. We'll see how he fits next to Ant. The OKC Thunder acquired Alex Caruso in a trade for Josh Giddy, but their best pickup was snagging former New York Knicks center Isaiah Hartenstein on a three-year deal worth $87 million. Despite being first in a stacked Western Conference, the Thunder were the second worst team in the league in offensive rebounding. Hartenstein ranked number five among players in that category, so he was the ideal fit. iHeart provides Chet Holmgren with an elite backup, making the young Thunder that much more dangerous. In what was the NBA's first ever six-team deal, Klay Thompson going to the Mavericks in a sign-and-trade puts an end to the Splash Brothers era and puts Klay next to Luka and Kyrie. In his last 10 regular season games leading up to the play-in tournament, Thompson averaged 22 points per game and shot 41% from three-point range on over 10 triples attempted on average. Lonnie Walker going to the Celtics was Boston's best pickup, as Walker looks to make the team during the preseason. Walker said that he'd be fine playing for Boston's G League affiliate, but would be a nice weapon off the reigning champion's bench if he did make the team. You can always use an extra punch of scoring, and that's what President Brad Stevens was going for here. This offseason, the Atlanta Hawks prioritized shoring up their 27th ranked defensive rating from last year by acquiring Larry Nance Jr. and Dyson Daniels. Daniels ranked top 10 in steals per game last season, so he's Atlanta's best pickup and provides a bit more balance around top scorer Trey Young as the Hawks look to get back to the playoffs in 2025. In the deal for Mikhail Bridges, the Brooklyn Nets acquired Boyan Bogdanovich, who won't be ready for training camp with the wrist slash foot injuries he suffered last season with the Knicks, but did shoot 40% from three-point range in the first round against Philly and averaged 11.4 points per game in April. As one of the six teams in the Clay Thompson trade, the Charlotte Hornets acquired Josh Green. Green was one of the lone bright spots for Dallas in their Game 5 loss to the Celtics, which closed out the finals. He scored 14 points on 5 for 8 shooting from the field and 4 for 6 shooting from deep. During the season, he shot just under 39% from three-point range and after four years in Dallas, will now likely take on a starting position next to LaMelo Ball and Brandon Miller. For Julius Randle and Dante DiVincenzo, the New York Knicks landed Carl Anthony Towns, a summer where they'd already landed Mikhail Bridges. The Knicks moved eight picks along with Randle and DiVincenzo for Towns and Bridges, but with Cat, they got a talent that was the primary defender on Jokic in a series where his Timberwolves took down the at-the-time reigning champions. In Game 7 of that series, Towns went off for 23 points on 8 for 14 shooting. Towns will form a lethal pick-and-pop tandem with Jalen Brunson, given he's made the most threes among all centers in the history of basketball and is the franchise's best center since Patrick Ewing. The Knicks will be a championship threat in 2025. The Chicago Bulls getting Josh Giddy in the Caruso trade fits their timeline given Giddy's a developing talent with a ton of untapped potential. For Australia at the Olympics, Giddy averaged 18 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 assists. Giddy's best season in the association thus far was in his sophomore campaign where he posted 17, 8, and 6. Expect him to thrive with a change of scenery in Chicago. For the Cleveland Cavaliers, while they had a busy summer extending Donovan Mitchell, Evan Mobley, Jarrett Allen, Isaac Okoro, and Tristan Thompson, their only addition was JT Thor on a two-way contract. The South Sudanese American spent his first three seasons at the power forward position for the Charlotte Hornets. The all-time triple doubles leader Russell Westbrook going to play with the fourth all-time triple doubles leader in Nikola Jokic should be interesting. The Nuggets ranked 25th in the association last season in bench scoring, so putting a nine-time All-Star and two-time scoring champion behind Jamal Murray is going to give them a much-needed boost. Rust to Denver was one of the more intriguing moves of the 2024 offseason. Tobias Harris is finally moving on from the Philadelphia 76ers and headed to the Detroit Pistons for his second tenure with the franchise. 
After spending the last six years in Philly, Harris signs a two-year, $52 million deal to take his talents to the Motor City. Tobias posted 17.2 points per game in his 13th season last year. The Pistons also brought in Malik Beasley, Tim Hardaway Jr., and Paul Reed. The Golden State Warriors had a nice offseason and put themselves in position to improve upon their play-in tournament loss in 2024. Buddy Heald was GM Mike Dunleavy's best pickup as Heald joins a situation that suits his playing style to the utmost extent. Heald's had five seasons where he's made at least 253s, the second most in NBA history, only trailing his new teammate, Stephen Curry. After a busy offseason in 2023 where they picked up Fred Van Vliet, Dylan Brooks, Jock Lawndale, and Jeff Green, the Rockets were quiet in 2024's offseason. They did acquire A.J. Griffin from the Hawks in exchange for a second-round pick at June's draft, but Griffin since retired from basketball. After making the Eastern Conference Finals, the Pacers had a quiet offseason, but did sign former Golden State Warrior James Wiseman to a two-year deal, giving them a third-string center behind Miles Turner and Isaiah Jackson. Philly has through and through trusted the process. One of this offseason's major blockbusters was Paul George joining Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey in Philadelphia on a four-year deal worth $212 million. Both George and Embiid are injury-prone, but on paper, the Sixers are now one of the most stacked teams in basketball. The addition of a six-time All-NBA player and four-time All-Defensive team player entails the Sixers will be a top contender if they can stay healthy. The Clippers mostly took L's this past summer given they lost Paul George and Russell Westbrook, but they did pick up Derek Jones Jr., who was a big piece to the Mavericks on their road to the finals, as DJJ ranked sixth among all players in total blocks during the 2024 playoffs. It was between returning to the Raptors or going to LA in the end for 7-1 Cameroonian center Christian Coloco, who had taken a year off due to a blood clotting issue in 23-24, and he chose the Lakers. LA also picked up JJ Redick as head coach and drafted Brawny, but this list sticks to players acquired through free agency or the trade market, and Coloco is a much needed man in the middle for LeBron to set up and to back up AD. They did draft Zach Eady, who should be a good fit, but the Memphis Grizzlies had a quiet offseason as the franchise's only new player acquired through either free agency or the trade market for 24-25 is Mamadi Diagait, who signed the two-way contract, a journeyman big who's set to play for his sixth team in five seasons. The Miami Heat were also quiet, but they picked up former New York Nick Alec Burks, who played considerably well in the conference semifinals against the Pacers. In five games of receiving legitimate playing time in round two, Burks averaged 17.8 points per game on a 51-43-84 shooting split, so a great snag for the Heat. The Pelicans landing DeJounte Murray in a trade with the Hawks where they gave up Nance Jr., Daniels, and two first-round picks was a bold one. But DeJounte is coming off a year where he averaged a career-high 22.5 points per game. Additionally, New Orleans needed a starting point guard, and Murray's certainly capable of being that. Adding veteran experience to the Orlando Magic, Contavious Caldwell-Pope is the only player other than Drew Holiday to have won multiple NBA championships since 2020. KCP's 3 and D presence and leadership is just what this Paolo Bancaro Franz Wagner-led unit required, that and a shooting guard. The Phoenix Suns added an underrated point guard who will presumably be their starter in 24-25 in Tyus Jones. Set to play for his third team in three years next to Devin Booker in the backcourt, Jones averaged career highs in minutes, points, assists, rebounds, field goal percentage, and three-point percentage for the Wizards last season. The Portland Trailblazers also signed a former Washington Wizard who had his best season in the league last year, in Denny Avdia. Avdia finished sixth in most improved player of the year voting in 23-24 by averaging career highs across the board including a 15-point-per-game average on 51% shooting from the field. Portland adds another young piece around Anthony Simon, Scoot Henderson, Shaden Sharp, and Robert Williams III. In a three-team sign-and-trade with the Bulls and Spurs, where Chicago received Chris Duarte and two second-round picks while San Antonio received Harrison Barnes, the Sacramento Kings acquired soon-to-be 16-year veteran, six-time All-Star, three-time All-NBA player, and runner-up for 2024's Clutch Player of the Year, DeMar DeRozan. You can expect DeRozan to form one of the better trios in the association with De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis, as well as for the Kings to be a playoff team. After a season in Golden State backing up Stephen Curry, 
Future Hall of Famer Chris Paul moves back into the starting five for the San Antonio Spurs, where he signed a one-year $11 million contract. This is good news for NBA fans, considering Victor Wembanyama finally has someone to consistently set him up and who's going to prioritize getting him the ball at all costs. Look for the pick and roll of CP and Wemby to gain chemistry and help win the Spurs 30 plus games this season. In a trade involving Jalen McDaniels, who did anything but live up to Raptor fans' expectations, Raptors president Masai Ujiri was able to land up and coming guard Davion Mitchell. Mitchell was a big defender for the Kings when they pushed the Warriors to 7 in 2023's first round, and last season he significantly increased his 3 point percentage to 36%. At 26 years old, Davion's still an improving player, so this was a nice pickup for Toronto. Given he averaged 16.5 points on 41% three-point shooting for Team Australia at the 2024 Olympics, Patty Mills still has some game left at age 36. Former Celtics president and current Utah Jazz president Danny Ainge signed him to a one-year veterans minimum, so he'll be backing up Keontae George and Colin Sexton next to Jordan Clarkson off the Utah bench. 2017's Rookie of the Year and 2023's 6th Man of the Year Malcolm Brogdon will play for his fourth different team in four seasons after being moved in a sign-and-trade from Portland to Washington in exchange for Denny Avdia, where he was moved alongside 2024's 14th overall pick Carlton Carrington and three future picks including a first-rounder. Brogdon's expected to play alongside Jordan Poole in the Wizard backcourt and next to rookie Alex Saar, as well as Kyle Kuzma, and another first-year wizard in Jonas Valanciunas in the starting five. Let me know the best pickup in your opinion down below, leave some video suggestions as well. This was your boy D-Flow, thank you the world for watching, and I'll see you next video.